Well, let's just keep reading here. Verse number six. The Lord said also unto me, in the days of Josiah the king, hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not. Now think about this in the context and what he's saying here of how loving and how, how, and how gracious God is. If you were married to someone and they went off and played the whore on you and they went off and were just cheating on you with a bunch of different guys or a bunch of different girls and just kept on just, just doing this, just, just being real filthy, right? For God to still have this attitude of saying, well, come, come back to me. I'm your husband. Come back to me. I'm your wife. Come back to me. I just want you to come back to me and, and you know, be done with all that that you're doing right now. This is the heart that God has, in, in this case, to Israel, but he also has this with us, also as his children. Now, it hurts him. Just like if you were to go out and commit adultery on your wife, you, know, you, you go out and do it, it's going to hurt really bad. There's a lot of pain there. There's a, there's a lot of, of uh, shame there and grief. And God is angry and he's upset when we go out and we, and we get involved in all this sin. But God still will not leave us. See, in the human example, we aren't God. What ought to happen when people get married is they ought to stay together for the duration of their marriage. That's the right thing. And that's a thing like God would expect. And see, because you make a vow and a promise, you say, I'm going to be there for you. That's why the for better and for worse is part of the, is part of the vows. Because it's for the worst times <laughs> that it's there. That's, that's why you need to make a promise. Hey, when things are going great, what's the, what do you even have to promise for? Everyone's having a good time. Of course you're not thinking about, about um, divorcing or anything like that. But when it's the bad times, when things fall real hard, that's why you have that promise there. You say, no, look, look, we, we promise you. My word means something. I'm going to stick by you. And, but see, people, you know, our heart gets hardened and things happen that, that are extremely difficult to deal with. And I'm not trying to understate what, what a horrible sin it is for someone to, to go out and play the whore or do something like that because it is extremely bad. And that's why the, the Bible actually puts the death penalty on people who commit adultery. It's what God intended for the laws to be. That because it is such a grievous, serious sin of committing adultery on someone, that God said, look, if, if you go out and do this, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. God said that's the right thing to do in that situation because it is a horrible sin. The damage that it does to the family, to the spouse, to, everyone, to anyone else who's involved in that, it is incredible. And the only way that we can deal with that and with that type of wickedness is for that person to be put to death. It's a capital crime according to the Bible. And you might say, wow, man, that's extreme. I can't believe you're saying that. Hey, I'm just saying this is, this is what God handed down to Moses from the word of God himself. I mean, this is God's law that he had ordained. Now, I know that's not our law of the land today, but I believe it should be. I believe that the laws of God should be the laws of the land today. Now, they're not, so we don't take the law in our own hands or do anything foolish like that. We still have to abide by the laws of our government, but... The way that God intended it and the way that he views that wicked of sin, it is a serious sin. And even after stating all of that, we see the heart of God saying, come back to me. It is a sin worthy of death and he's still saying, come back to me. Come back. Stop doing what you're doing and come back to me.